what's going on? Cameron here with the Lawn Care Life in Missouri. I got Ed Wright here. Uh, as you guys know, um, I've been running the Wright ZK Autonomous Mower the whole season and the Wright ZXT, but Ed has something new here he's going to show us, so let's check it out. Yeah, so here we have the standard LG, which is our, um, it's kind of going back to our roots, a very simple, solid kind of machine. We've added a lot of features to a lot of our other mowers over the years for, you know, good and various reasons. And there's a lot of folks that just want a machine that is dead simple, easy to work on, easy to maintain, easy to keep it running. Um, in some cases, it might be worth running this chassis through more engines so you get more over the life, whole life of the machine. Um, so it's, it's simplified. The biggest difference between this machine and the ZK that we have right here is the ZK has a pump and motor drive system and the engine floats with the cutter deck. So the belts don't have an angle to them when we cut high or we cut low. And on the LG, what allows us to do, get rid of maybe half of the number of parts on this machine is we have integrated transmissions in the back of it and the engine stays level with the frame and the transmissions the whole time and when the deck goes up and down there's a belt angle that goes down the deck cut really low or really high we've done some things in order to make that work um, in terms of the belt span going all the way across we reduce the angle on it but overall this just allows for you to have a lower life cycle cost in this machine between what it costs up front how long you can run it what it costs to keep it running it's the next step and the next evolution for for us and stand on mowers. And it's priced between like eleven and a half to, to twelve thousand dollars kind of range. Um, so is where it's at, which is uh, a good bit lower than like something like a ZK, um, a little bit higher than something like a standard X because you are getting a lot more for your money here. In terms of engines, we're offering FX 850 um, engine. This is a carbureted engine, which some people kind of scratch their head and say, hey, why are we not offering EFI engine on this mower at this time? It's just that these carbureted engines, they're really easy to work on and really easy to keep running. And so you look at how much you save in fuel and the probability of what you might save on maybe a more expensive repair. I think right now for this product, especially in this first year, this is the most tried and true engine that we can put on here and get just you know brutal reliability out of it. The next one down here has the uh, bagging system on it. So this is the same bagging unit that we put on our riders or on the ZK. The adapter kit, which lets the bagger mount to this chassis, um, is a little bit different because the mower, mower's frame is slightly different. And then we've got our standard blower down here, which is a pretty high volume blower. It's, it's large, it's got a big pulley, we can take a lot of torque from the engine to drive it. Um, and compared to some other bagger systems, our bagger, the weight's more centered over the machine, so as it fills up, it's not you know lopsided one way or the other. Um, so this is this this bagger has been out now for a couple of years and uh, it's working pretty well for us at this point so we're excited to bring the LG out we're gonna have some limited availability through the winter and into spring certainly if anybody's interested in one in, in one it's important that your dealer knows that um, so they can count that into what's coming in and earmark it maybe for you um, we are expecting to be chasing trying to keep up with it now one thing I noticed on the LG compared to the ZK is that uh, platform, the platform's a lot bigger and the pad is like really nice and comfortable. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so uh, let's walk behind this machine here. When we went to these uh, integrated transmissions, we could move these walls farther apart to create a wider standing area. And then the platform itself, it has a tapered edge here so that if you're on a hill, just put one foot on that edge, it gives you a little more stability. Um, the pad is just sort of upgrading our, our look and our brand. We didn't want a pad that was super bolstered that cages you in here so you don't have as much mobility, but we did want just enough contour where you can kind of feel the center of the pad without looking at it. Um, and it you know, looks a little bit nicer as well. Up here, the handlebars are also wider. That was part of widening the frame and widening the platform. And that just gives you more a stronger sense of control of the machine when, it, when it's a little wider, a little more comfortable to use. Awesome, man. Well, I ran the ZXT, I ran the ZXL, and I ran the autonomous ZK, but I haven't ran the LG yet. Hopefully, in the future, I don't know, what do you think? Maybe I can run the LG at one point and uh, test it out for you guys, but yeah. is there anything else that you want to show me here in the right booth? Yeah, there might be some big people that would be interested in the, the obstacle visualization on the autonomous mower. You want to take a look at that? Yeah, sure.
So we have a mower right over here um, beside the TV. And this TV is a live view of everybody that's standing around this mower right now. And on the top here, we have our four depth sensing cameras. So those depth sensing cameras, they send out a, like a little dot matrix of uh, infrared light points. And then the two infrared cameras, they can you know, see how far away that dot is. And so it creates these maps up here. And what the machine is looking for is flat ground. It's not gonna run if it doesn't have flat ground. If something sticks up more than so much or has some certain amount of bulk above the flat ground, it's gonna call that an obstacle. And that obstacle in the mind of the computer um, is setting these red boxes around these different things. So I think um, this is gonna be us here behind the machine. We got a bunch of people standing in front of the machine. Anytime it sees an obstacle like that, it's gonna steer clear and go around it. We have an, an, another camera on the machine. And this one uses more of a machine learning or AI kind of like system. And it's based on um, color cameras. And it says, you know, this person looks like people that I've seen in my database before. And you can see a little number at the top with the percentage. So, you know, a lot of these people, it's got a 90% or 95% certainty it's a person. And then somebody that's like way down there on the aisle that, you know, might say that's 2% chance that's a person. So it's not based on the, the seeing depth shape. It's, it's like a visual uh, match of, of categories of objects. Um, another object that we look for is cones. So um, like a soccer cone kind of a thing. They're very easy to put out. If you have something flush to the ground in the middle of the field you don't want to mow over, you can put a cone on it. Um, so we snap on cones pretty well. And then in the future we want to do things like tell the difference between a sprinkler head and a stick. You might be okay running over the stick, but you don't want to run over the sprinkler head, and you can't you can't see that with the depth sensing cameras. It's just a, an object, right? But with the visual, you can pick up on the visual cues of different types of objects like that. And when the machine updates, we, you know we can update the type of things that it's looking for here. So there's a lot of future capability um, that's available to us as the machine over time gets updates here. Overall, um, machines uh, work pretty well for us. Um, we now offer the duels on it. What I tell people, the duels are nice. The, the duels <laughs> gives you a lot more control when it's turning on slope ground. You can put a weight kit on them underneath of it, 100 pound weight kit. So it lets you put on a little bit more aggressive terrain. You're not going to take it up on major embankments because sure. the, the hydras are going to be fighting you know, where the software thinks it needs to go. What what type of uh, what type of uh, slope do you think is ideal for? this uh, ZK autonomous mower because I have a lot of people asking sure. it's like well how steep you know of a hill do you really want to take it up it I haven't really tried it out so. yeah there isn't an exact number that we recommend because uh -huh. it's so condition dependent like when you buy a car they don't tell you how fast you can go around right, a corner because right. it could be icy or it could be dry uh -huh. I would say though that 5% is easy 10% okay. most cases is gonna be easy when you get into something around 15% the machine's just going to command a turn when it gets to the edge. Sure. So if that edge is right where the ground is pointed down, it's going to slip when it tries to turn. But if that edge goes down to the flat area, it turns around and goes back up, mm -hmm. it'll deal with somewhere around 15%. Okay. You're really pushing your luck over that because you know it could be a little bit damp out today, so now it's going to slip and give up on something. Sure. But so you always got to know your mowing conditions. That's right. So I wouldn't call it a, a you know a hill mower but you can get, definitely get it on rolling terrain and, okay. and you know, set your stripe direction up to, to make it work pretty well. Sure. It's really nice to see those duels on there. It definitely gives you a lot more control. And the stripe looks different too. Yeah. The one I have in my house has duels on it, and it's I cut the exact same stripes uh -huh. every week. Okay. I have all all the different zones uh -huh. are you know, all the same exact same uh, two degree angle. Oh, wow. It's, it, yeah. it looks good once you start getting them burned in. Yeah, I've noticed running the ZK Autonomous Mower, um, you kind of have to work with it and, and figure out what like angle you want to hit, but after a while you can get it down to where you can come into the property, you can mow it one way, the next time you come in you can switch up the angle with the uh, app, it's easy to do now. Yeah, it is really switch, easy to do now. Switch up the angle, and so yeah, anytime you go in there you can swap the angles out and lay some nice fresh stripes, but um, just want to get in on here real quick. Uh, just wanted to thank him for allowing me to try out the uh, right ZXT and the right ZK. So thank you for yep. that. Yep. I really appreciate it. And then uh, if you guys saw the TV behind me here, that was really cool. Uh, just learning more about the cameras and just what the 
cameras are seeing when it's out there mowing because I don't get to see any of that stuff. When I'm running the mower, I just see all the grass. You guys see the stripes, but uh, for Ed to kind of break it down and show us what the you know cameras are seeing, I think that's pretty interesting. Yeah. Well, it's so, good to see I appreciate you. it. Appreciate what you're doing. Yeah, thanks a lot for your time. Sure thing. I appreciate it, yep. and uh, hope you guys enjoy the uh, Equip Expo. All right, I got one quick question before we go uh, for Ed, and that is like the Green Z technology. A lot of guys have asked. Uh, how much the mower costs, first of all, and then they ask how much is the monthly subscription. So can you kind of break that down for me? Yep. So we actually just reduced our cost uh, 30, 60 days ago uh, by a good bit. We've got a better understanding of what it costs to make these things, and we also have the capacity to make more of them. So we brought the price down to, it was like 50 grand uh, in two years. Now we're at um, like 45, 999. Okay. That's three years of the full software support. And then, if you're, you want to use the machine, you know, more years after that, mm -hmm. it's two hundred dollars a month. After that, third oh wow, yeah. two hundred dollars a month. Two hundred dollars a month, yeah. Because it used to be a thousand dollars a month, so it's a, it's a, it's a big drop. I know it's That's still pretty huge. expensive when you think about a mower payment. Yeah. But um, hey, I can it do. Costs, it costs a lot to make this stuff work and run, you know. That's right. I can do two hundred dollars a yeah. month now. A lot of you guys have been asking, so there's an the answer from the man himself. So yep. I appreciate that. Sure thing. Are you doing it?
first person view. What? Now do the <laughs> this view. guys just want to give a huge shout out to Wright Morris for having me in their booth at the Equip Expo and I want to give a huge shout out to you guys that uh, came and stopped by and uh, hung out for a little bit checked out the Wright equipment so shout out to my buddy Tony Tony's Lawn Care, Phil's Lawn Care, Lansing Lawn Service, Burkhart Lawn Care, uh, who else? Dogwood was in the house and man so many of you guys Scotty Thanks for stopping by, and uh, each and every one of you guys that stopped by, man, I really do appreciate it. I know I'm leaving a whole lot of names out, but, um, man, we had a good turnout at the right booth, and I thank you guys so much for your support. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed uh, checking out the right mowers, and uh, I'm out of here, man. Back in Missouri, got to get back to work and uh, make things happen. So appreciate you sticking around. Appreciate you watching. Appreciate the continued support. We'll catch you in the next video and uh, have a good day. And as always, hey, God provides.